for all the news happening out of space. I'm joined by astrophysicist Brad Tucker. Brad, thank you so much for joining me. There's been yeah, no some worries. exciting things happening in New Zealand this week. Its rocket labs have launched their first rocket recovery. Well, they did that on Friday. How did it go? Yeah, it was a fantastic mission for them. Um, so Rocket Labs has been this uh, a small company that's really picked up steam. Uh, they've had quite a few successful rockets, and their, their next goal was rocket recovery. You know, we've seen SpaceX uh, and Blue Origin both do this, where SpaceX, you know, lands their rocket. And the recovery means that, you know, that rocket that you see on the launch pad, instead of falling in the ocean and essentially going to waste, they can reuse it. The more they reuse it, the cheaper it becomes for all those launches. Uh, so it was a first attempt at the recovery. And for what they're uh, saying already, uh, it was essentially completely successful. So the next trick, obviously, is to, to test a relaunch of that rocket. So once they recover it, now that they can relaunch it, make sure that all works. And then, you know, they are, uh, they are up and away, so to speak, as we say. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible vision that we can see now from that rocket recovery. Look, that's happening in New Zealand. China is set to launch their next rover to the moon on Tuesday, and that will take samples from the moon and return it back to Earth. Now, this hasn't been done for more than 40 years. Is that right? That's right. It really, since the Russians did it in the 70s. So, you know, the Americans obviously landed with the Apollo missions. They had the astronauts who uh, collected the rock and brought it back to the Earth. The Russians landed rovers that sent the rocket back to, uh, the rocks back to Earth. And China would be the third country that would ever do this. And as you said, we haven't done right. this for, for the better part of, what, three, four decades. And so, it, you know, China has been rapidly growing their space program to put them on par with, with the other two great nations of the U.S. and Russia. And, and this successful mission, if it's completely successful, uh, would, would make them that one step closer to being uh, on par with them. So I think everyone is uh, wishing them the best. And what will it tell us about the moon? You know, one of the great things that we've seen in recent times is that the moon has lots of ice, lots of water on it. And this is key uh, to landing and using the moon as a base, essentially. It's what everyone wants to do. Now, what China will be doing with their mission is they'll be drilling down, essentially, uh, at upwards of maybe six meters. Now, you know, if you think about your garden or your dirt at home, right, you may not have some mm. nice soil on the top. It has, you know, you dig down a little bit, even... 30 centimeters, you get sometimes hard clay or the composition changes. Same thing on the moon. So by digging down, we can see what are those layers beneath the surface? What is it like? What is the water content potentially? What is the ice content? Uh, and it's also landing near a, uh, a previous Apollo site, Apollo 12. So when it lands back in, in, on Earth mid to late December, uh, we'll get a better clue as to what is underneath the surface uh, of the moon. So maybe we could be having holidays on the moon, depending on what comes out of this on, on Tuesday. That's but, right. But that leads me to my, my next topic, is that private space travel might not be too far away. So the first fully operational SpaceX and NASA human mission was launched this week. Does that mean that private space travel isn't far away? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, with the, with the Apollo capsule, or sorry, the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule uh, essentially now entering service, uh, it could be used for multiple things. Essentially, NASA, SpaceX, everyone says, yep, it is good to go to send humans into space. And because SpaceX controls this, they can choose how many missions they want to send and who they want to send. So obviously, they have contracts to send NASA astronauts. And this is what we saw on Monday. They sent three NASA astronauts plus a Japanese astronaut. They have three more missions already scheduled throughout the uh, next year, 2021, including potentially one at the end of this year again. What it means is that they can start scheduling private people. And in fact, in October, um, two private astronauts, so uh, just from a private company, these people have trained, plus two uh, members of the public. One of them's a bit special, Tom Cruise, uh, will be on the October flight. And Tom Cruise and the other passenger, who will be the director, will actually start filming the first movie, uh, Hollywood movie in space. And all of this is now possible because this capsule is entered service and it's ready to go as we saw on Monday. Wow, aren't they lucky. So how would private space travel work? Would people be having to go away for months at a time? Yeah, so at this stage, it's not gonna be very long duration missions. So the astronauts that launch the space station uh, on Monday will be up there for six weeks. Uh, what SpaceX is looking at in the near future is six to 10 day missions in space. So kind of like a, 
a week or two weeks holiday, so just enough where you could take two weeks leave of work and still fit it in. Um, <laughs> longer duration missions are probably a bit further off, but even other companies like Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin are all looking at those shorter time frames. Uh, that means also they can obviously send more people up as opposed to just sending a few people up for a longer duration. It's all very exciting and it's so unbelievable that it's not too far away. Look, yeah. a huge radio telescope in Puerto Rico has that has searched for uh, searched for li signs of life in recent times and was a set in the James Bond movie has suffered damage and will be shut down. Can you tell us what's happened there? Yeah, it's a, it's a sad day. So the Arecibo uh, telescope in Puerto Rico is, has been a workhorse in a radio astronomy for, for decades. You know, it's probably only second in terms of stature to our own parks, the Dish uh, in New South Wales. And it's had a bad run. There was the earthquake in 2017, the hurricane in 2019, and over time it's degraded. You can see there's holes in the bottom of the Dish. Some main support mm -hmm. structures underneath have just broken. Uh, and what it means now, it, it is too costly to repair and the National Science Foundation, which is the U.S. government body for science, has essentially said, we can't fix it, we can't maintain it anymore. And even though it's had, you know, 50 plus years of great service, it will be decommissioned uh, in the near future. So kind of a sad end of an era for radio astronomy, and in particular, the Arecibo Radio Telescope. Brad Tucker, we're just out of time. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Take care.